Hey, thank you for joining Rudy and me. We're studying Proverbs, and we're in chapter 6 today. We're going to start off with verse 12 and talk about the scoundrel and the villain. They go around with crooked speech, winking the eyes, shuffling the feet, pointing the fingers, with perverted mind devising evil, continually sowing discord, on such a one calamity will descend suddenly in a moment, damage beyond repair. Disclaimer, these verses were not given so I can point my finger at some politician or business person or anybody else and say, yep, there's the guy. They are given to warn me against people who have those uh, characteristics and to be aware of them. We live in a world of social media and so much is communicated through social media. And um, for example, I, I read a little blurb from Bellincat. You may not be familiar with that organization, but they are some of the, the best truth finders in the world right now. And what they said was, concerning the war between uh, Israel and Hamas, they said, really beware of false information on social media. So there are people who want to capture us and capture our mind and capture maybe our money and our attention and our behavior. And they're not honorable. Rather, they're a scoundrel and a villain. And they use crooked speech. And then they use hand gestures, winking the eyes, shuffling the feet, pointing the fingers. You don't know that wink and you don't know that hand gesture unless you have some form of relationship with them. Uh, some people call that a dog whistle. You don't know that. But the truth is they have a perverted mind that divides evil and their goal is to sow discord and destruction. Uh, I just kind of laid out my little sermon there. Rudy, you want to comment on that? Well, because you, uh, you're able to see this in the broader context of what Solomon is really talking about, we think that because it was written 3,000 years ago, because this is 1,000 years before Jesus comes to yeah. earth, uh, that what he's writing about has no real standing in our life. <laughs> this but is as real as today's news. <laughs> it sure is. And but what we one of the things that God is reminding me is is that these are rudimentary examples of covetousness and pride. And the reason that it fits in the world today is because maybe these things are not what highlights what we're thinking about, but they are all connected to what is highlighted today and we are thinking about. And really, you know, Isaiah 53 gets into this, that, you know, to take his death as a guilt offering, and a guilt offering is for iniquity. Uh, you know, this morning I, I, I kind of messed this up last time we were taping when I was talking about iniquity and uh, and this is this is my definition of iniquity mm -hmm. all iniquity is sin mm -hmm. but all sin cannot be considered iniquity because I believe in God's economy he, he, he made this word for us to understand the hardness of our heart and the wrong thinking in our mind. Mm -hmm. And so when we say when we say that all sin is iniquity, mm -hmm. uh, it's not true. Because there are, in Leviticus where it defines a holy commandment being broken, it's because you've broken the intimacy inside of your body. Yeah. And so wrong thought, the only one that can really help you to correct that is a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Let me just take off on that because you made a good point. If you think of the Holy of Holies, 
come on. There are a couple of times when the Holy of Holies have been desecrated in history. When they brought something evil into the Holy of Holies. When we think of our inside self, our heart, as the Holy of Holies. Come on. Iniquity is bringing something unholy within that holy place. Let me interrupt you just for yeah, a second. Yeah, go ahead. And the reason that it connects so completely is because the Holy of Holies was the only place in the world where heaven and earth met. Right. Now, that Holy of Holies where heaven and earth meets is in your heart. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't, you know, you just can't, you can't discard that. Right. So at the root of what we're reading right here, of the wicked, the scoundrel, the villain, what they have done is they have embraced evil They've hardened in, their hearts. in their holy place that was really reserved for God. The warning is, don't go there. You know, don't, don't go there. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. Well, I mean, today when we're thinking about how we would fix everything in the world, you know, and right. then you have all these what-ifs going on in your mind, the only true response once you've realized that after you've made four or five chess moves in the situation you're no better off than you were before yeah. basically that's when you tell yourself to stop yeah. and then you just bow your head and ask God to help yeah, absolutely. so these words are a warning Yeah. and they're a warning to us to, to not be influenced by people who want to capture us for their purposes. They don't care about us. Uh, they want their will and they want to use us as a tool. And God's word says, don't let them get into your heart. You want to, you want to have a last thought and pray for us? Uh, we just, it's Yesterday, I listened to Hamas's, the leader of Hamas, uh, a political leader, the mayor of Gaza, on his response to the attack in Israel. Yeah. And the, the, mon the person that was interviewing him from the press was, kept asking him questions about how can you kill women and children. And he says, we don't. And then the guy was saying, well, what about the 1,200 people that are, that are dead, that we have the dead bodies for? They were not people. They were soldiers. So that's the misinformation. Uh, Why are crooked, they soldiers? Crooked speech. <laughs> yeah. Why are they soldiers? Because they actually, somebody in their family is collecting information because they live close to the border about what's going on in Gaza makes them a soldier yeah. in Israel. It's right. like you can see how crazy that thought is. Yeah. For sure, yeah. we are human. We have those crazy thoughts in us too. Yeah. The, only, the only way that we can pray is for God to help. Father, you're the only one worthy to reign because you're the only one worthy to reign. Father, we just ask for mercy and grace. We ask that your face uh, would be towards your people. We pray that the countenance of your light, the dew of light from your face would bring us peace. Uh, Father, in Jesus' name, we ask that you would help us. Amen. Amen. Rudy, thank you. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, it's a somber day for the two of us and probably for millions of other people around the world. There's a lot of tough stuff happening. And our answer is, let's turn to the Lord. See you tomorrow. Have a great day.